Okay, so uh, this week's In My Mug comes from Brazil um, and it comes from, we were in Brazil a couple of weeks ago and it comes from Inglaterra, which was a couple of weeks ago. So what's that mean? Steve, why are you sending us the same coffee? More to come in just a moment. So why am I sending you the same coffee? The coffee comes from the same farm, it's the same varietal, it's the same process. But I thought this was really interesting. Why did I think it was interesting? Well, um, the first one you had was a cup of excellence entrance that narrowly missed out, mainly because of the changes. We had Stephen on telling us all about that. Um, this is the standard lot. And although they're not massively different, it gives you an insight into what um, the difference between a natural, uh, the, the, like a natural that will suit the cup of excellence and a natural that will suit the rest of the market. They taste just ever so slightly different. And I'm really hoping that you have some left over from a couple of weeks ago, because if you have that, you can try them side by side and see for yourself. Um, I think they're both great coffees uh, standalone and um, I hope you do too. So what we're going to do this week is a little bit different because we did this a couple of weeks ago and I want to give you the same content. So Virtual Steve's going to come along and just do his little bit on the farm and then after that we're going to go back in time to episode 18 of In My Mug back in 2009 where we had a has-been meet up with uh, some customers um, which was lots of fun and it just shows how bad I was at these then and I guess I'm not an awful lot better now but I like to think it's a little bit slicker now um, so uh, and then after that we're going to come back and do the tasting Sorry, one sec. There we go. thanks Steve it looks really lovely in Stockholm at the moment very very pretty now, obviously, we did this farm a, a little while back um, and we talked about this and we actually had Stephen Hurst talking about this, the owner of the farm. But, you know, the details are it's in Minas Gerais, near to the city of Posos de Caldos. Um, it's around about 10 hectares in size, uh, has an altitude of 1,200 metres above sea level. But why don't we look at some pictures of... Um, Steve from the past. So first we've got him standing on the farm with uh, the farm in the background uh, in his Brazil shirt. Um, then we have a, a picture of him and Stephen Hurst. But Stephen's hair, S Stephen Layton's hair seems to have gone a little red. Um, and then in the next picture we've got the famous rock that is on Inglaterra. Now this rock is whenever you visit you have to take a bottle of whiskey with you and have uh, at least a shot of whiskey while looking over the farm. Absolutely beautiful sight. Here we've got the, the Pulp Natural drying on the patios um, and the guys turning it over. Not sure what Steve's doing here, I think he's pulling a funny face at us. Um, and that's the run of the photos. So. Um, why don't we get in a time machine and go back in time? Hello everybody and welcome to an In My Mug. A really special one because we have an audience. Say hello audience. Hello. This is the first ever has been meetup that we've done and been blown away with how many people have come. Um, quick count ahead, you've probably got around about 25, 30 people here, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, going to do it and in my book with all of the people here, and hopefully, everybody got a cup? Nearly. All right, it's okay because I've got to do all my bits first. The coffee that we're going to try today is a brand new one from Inglaterra. Now, I know some of you all have seen Inglaterra on me and my mugs before and would have tried the Canario one. This is a different varietal, it's um, pronunciation, rubbish, Arcacia. And Arcacia is something I've never come across before, so I'm really excited about trying it. It's a pulp natural, so very similar to the Kishwara that we've had. It's um, kind of not washed and not dried, it's in between. They do a little bit of both with it. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to try. Inglaterra is a farm in Brazil that we've been very close, closely linked with because the guy who owns it is my really good friend, Stephen, Stephen Hurst. He's our importer from a company called Macanta, who without him we wouldn't have been able to import some of the coffees that we have. He decided three years ago that he was going to have his own farm, so he went and bought Inglaterra, which is uh, in a similar area to um, Cachoeira, which lots of you will know about. 
Kishwara is, uh, uh, last time I said it was next door, and then I got corrected that it's an hour and a half away, but apparently in Brazil you can still call that next door, because uh, it's such a big country. And um, it's run by Gabriel, who owns Cachoeira, so he goes and manages it for Stephen and looks after it. And I love the quote that Gabriel came up with when Stephen first got his farm. He said, there was a time where every farm had a fool, you now every fool has a farm, and I just think that's perfect. <laughs> so, let's dive in there. No posh mug today, because I wanted everybody just to get a little sample, and no green and roasted for me to get my snozzer in, because, again, it was just a matter of trying to get one of these recorded without boring everybody to death who's watching. So I'm going to dive into the cup and see what we get. And on the front end, I get a lot of sweetness. I get kind of a typical sweetness that Cachoeira brings me. Does anybody else get that? Yes. <laughs> but you can't say no, can you? It's not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm quite surprised, I was expecting it to be a little bit more funky, a little bit more in there, but I mean, it's... Very, very subtle, isn't it? Very, very subtle, or, or almost tea-like subtle. It is, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't know whether that's... Yeah. No, I mean, we brewed it as filter, and, and with the filter, I tend to go with around about 60 to 65 grams, and actually up doses, 1 to 65 grams. I think it could almost do with another 10, 15 yeah. grams thrown at it, which... It is really high. Um, I can see this being a really good blend component in an espresso though. It kind of doesn't have the body but has that kind of nice freshness and cleanness on the cup. Um, what does anybody else get in there? Does anybody get any taste jump to mind? Talk about working a crowd. <laughs> yeah, now Jasmine's a good one. Definitely, I think, you know, again, that tea like tend to find those two go very well together when you get something that's tea like Anything else? A few more. That's okay. That's okay. Is it good? Do you like it? Yeah, well, that's a start, then, isn't it? It's a start. I don't think there's any bitters in there, which I think I'll, I'll really like that as a, as a start to the cup. It's a very smooth cup, and that's, that's a positive for me. Um, I can really like that, so... So yeah, I mean, what I'd like to do is perhaps do a cupping of this one, to actually get a cupping bowl and try the cupping. Um, so I'm going to pause this, going to set up the cupping bowl, and then people can come and try the cupping bowl and we'll see what they think of that. So back in a couple of minutes. So I'm back, we've re-brewed the filter pot, um, we've cupped it, we've uh, got espresso on it. So, I tried the cupping, and the cupping reminded me exactly why I love this coffee. I don't know what's gone on with the filter. I've re-filtered it, and it's better. But it's not quite right, and I'm kind of starting to think this isn't a filter coffee. Um, it kind of really disappointed me as a filter. It's almost a little wishy-washy. Uh, you get some of the sweetness, but there's just no body. On the cupping, big body, huge body. Uh, so, I don't know. I'm going to try it as an espresso. So, has anybody else got an espresso? Yeah? What do we think is an espresso? Come on, Peter, I'm relying on you to say something. <laughs> something insightful. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very different to the espresso. Some, we just smell it coming off the clover, and on the clover it was very uh, butterscotch, kind of palmer violets, uh, which a few people who try palmer violets with. Yeah, that Colin, who's never heard of a pint of violet, just went, I don't know. Tasty, tasty. <laughs> but yeah, as an espresso, it gets a lot of that sweetness back. Uh, body is much bigger. It definitely works better as an espresso, for sure. Uh, have we got any of the clover done yet? Yes. Can I grab a bit of clover? Excuse the pause. Huh. No, the hand is not pause. See, I'm trying to make jokes and nobody's getting my paws and hands joke. <laughs> you did just want some fun. Bit wishy washy again, but the palm of violence is incredibly strong. Um, this isn't a built coffee. Yeah. You know that one out. Definitely not a filter. I'd love to try it as an aero press or as a. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, French press. Well, there's a film there. No, thank you. Not, not for me. There's an espresso. I think it's really good. I think it's got something there. It's much sweeter. It's much more, much more body. A lot more to it. Great made feel. Um, yeah, but certainly not a build to coffee. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can hear me okay. It's a little windy up here, but uh, just gonna kind of show you the view that I'm sitting here looking at. And I'm carrying on the theme of bringing the coffee out to do the tasting, rather than be doing it, um, you know, inside or whatever, enjoying the weather while we can. So I know that we had this a couple of weeks ago, as I said earlier, and um, you might be saying, well, you know, kind of what's the difference? Like it's the same varietal, same process from the farm, but I'm really hoping that some of you have a little bit left from last week so you can try them side by side. So last week, not last week, the week before, sorry, was very sweet, milk chocolate, uh, kind of a little bit of nut. And this is chocolate too, but very different chocolate. So. This is a little bit more dark chocolate, a little bit more kind of um, that kind of roasted hazelnut. So kind of like that it's been through a little bit of the cooking process, you know, like they've been toasted just a little bit. Um, it's got more body to it. And I think this is a better espresso than it is a filter. Um, but, and I think that the COE one from a couple of weeks ago was a better filter than it was espresso. So every coffee, although it might score a little bit points higher, a little few points high, higher or lower on the cupping table, um, doesn't mean that it's not going to be um, a great tasty coffee. And this is perfect. Um, let you in. Come here. I made a French press. And I think it's a perfect French press because it's got that big toasty presence to it. Um, yeah, it's, it, Inglaterra is a fantastic farm that produces fantastic coffee from a fantastic friend. And I'm really, really enjoying this. And I hope that you are too. Thank you for joining. Uh, do hope to see you again here soon. Uh, but do remember, life is too short for bad coffee.